since blockchain is this big topic, this big spectrum of technologies, uh, sometimes it gets confusing on how can you create a solution or how you manage things like users and identities and servers and architecture and so on. So I will just take uh, a few minutes, like five minutes to cover these basics on architecture. So the basic component of a blockchain uh, solution are the nodes. So the nodes are these uh, servers that you can see when you are uh, installing Hyperledger Fabric, for example, uh, with Hurley. Uh, this is just software that, that is going to, uh, in which you are going to upload the smart contracts and this is going to emulate transactions and so on. So usually this infrastructure has to be owned by somebody uh, it could be uh, a company and usually it's a company. So unlike public blockchains in which everything is permissionless and uh, customers, for example, uh, can even get a node if they want in an enterprise scenario, usually the guys that are holding these nodes are companies. So these are enterprises that are keeping this in their data centers uh, and they protect the servers and so on. So this is the first part the, the first the first party in, in a blockchain network so usually you have multiple companies and multiple enterprises uh or public sector or companies like that that are holding the infrastructure that is the first layer of a, of a blockchain solution so in this case uh, enterprise solutions need some compliance usually so for you to uh, comply with regulations you need to manage cryptography so usually when you work with something like Ethereum or something like that, it is uh, simple to create, you know, a new wallet or something like that and then start making transactions. Um, in this case, in enterprise setups, it is different. You have to comply with some regulations. Uh, so you usually use what it's called a, a PKI, which is a infrastructure for private key. Um, so what this means is that instead of just having independent certificates like you would in a public blockchain for example you can have a whole structure of certificates which, which is kind of like a like a like a tree of certificates so you can have something like uh, i have this root certificate and then uh, i have a certificate that inherits from this one and then i inherit also other certificates so you create this structure that goes something like this, uh, in which, for example, uh, it, it works pretty much like a tree. If you, uh, if this certificate, for example, gets compromised, it gets it gets a stolen or something like that, you can get rid of the whole branch of certificates. So you can uh, make, have much more control. You can have a much more um, a, a much more manageable way to create certificates. And with this uh, a structure in which you are uh, creating this, you can also delegate some tasks and delegate certificates. So usually, this is what it's called in Hyperlayer Fabric, uh, the, the Fabric CA server. Uh, it's called Fabric CA. So it, it, it is in charge of generating certificates. With that, the end can be identities in your blockchain. So this is fairly important. Uh, these certificates can be used to sign transactions and send them to the blockchain. Therefore, this could be used to identify parties in the blockchain. So usually what you do is you create a user. So uh, the Fabric CA is it's basically from a conceptual perspective based off on users. And then users can have certificates. I can have one or multiple certificates. And every single component in, high, in a hyperlayer fabric network needs to have certificates. Everything that is shared should be signed and, and encrypted if, when needed between the parties. So for example, let's say that we create this certificate, which comes from what is called an organizational unit. For example, I want to create an organizational unit for all the nodes in my blockchain. So I create this certificate and I, in this case, I can a little bit of color to separate this from the rest. I can take this certificate and I can this node. So when this node is talking to another node, so a node from another company, 
it can be identifiable by this certificate. So this other company can have their own uh, separate cryptographic structure. Uh, sorry there. And they could have their, their own uh, separate cryptographic structure. And they can, you know, create also a certificate and then they can ass uh, assign this certificate to this node so that when the communication goes the other way around, it, this other organization can know who is this and talk to them. So this is important because this is the basis for uh, identity in uh, hyperfabric blockchain. The next layer of communications are what are called, uh, sometimes these are called applications. Sometimes these are called consumers of the blockchain. Uh, this may have multiple names, but this is usually a server. Uh, what communicates directly to, block, to the blockchain nodes are uh, servers or APIs. So these guys, usually they keep also a certificate. So for example, in here, I can uh, give this another role. In this case, this is going to be a, consume, a consuming uh, certificate. So what happens is the following. When you talk to the blockchain, in this case, let's move this uh, to the right because this is actually from this organization. Somebody has to make the calls to the blockchain and calls to the blockchain in Hyperlayer Fabric have to go signed by the party. So it is easier to understand who is making transactions and it makes every change evident. So in this case, um, this certificate is going to be used for example, by the by Fabrics SDK or by Convector, which actually uses Fabric SDK. Um, at the at the end, it's it's the same uh, to sign transactions. So when somebody is making a request, let's say that we have this web application that is making a request, this doesn't have to know about the blockchain. It, it, it's not really a concern of this web application. It doesn't have to know. So this web application is going to make a call to this uh, server API. This server is going to sign this based on this identity through the SDK, and this is going to communicate to the whole blockchain. And how is this happening? This happens through what is called the, the network profile that you may have seen this already as Hurley usually create this automatically for you. So in this case, let's say that we have this network profile, which uh, it has all the addresses of the blockchain participants. So it has things like uh, URLs and certificates and uh, TLS related matters for SSL. So when you have this network profile, this network profile is storing here and uh, the SDK understands the network profile, understands the identity and sends the transactions signed. So, Here's a common confusion. Usually people ask things like, how can I create a certificate for an end user? So an end user is usually right here. It, it, this guy, uh, this end user may be like a customer or it could be uh, something like a patient or a doctor or something like that. They communicate with this web application. They don't necessarily need to know that there is a blockchain behind the scenes because all they want are the benefits, not the complications of a blockchain. Uh, so you have to find a way to manage these identities separate from the blockchain. There are some patterns that are, have been around for a while called self-sovereign identity. Uh, these self-sovereign identities are a way for end, uh, end users like these ones uh, to create their, um, their identity and to manage it by themselves. There's a project in the Hyperlayer ecosystem called Hyperlayer Indie, which was uh, graduated just recently. So it's really, uh, it's really an interesting project that you should check out. It is not integrated with Fabric yet, but it is an option to generate uh, identities for this part of the, of the architecture. So why am I making uh, so much focus on this architecture part? It's because to, under to fully understand the code from Instamet, you really need to, to get a grasp of how this works. So in this case, this, this could also have another APIs. This could also have IoT uh, devices. Or you could even have multiple applications with other certificates. So for example, I could create in here a, another uh, certificate. 
In this case, I am going to create a certificate for another uh, server identity, which is going to be dedicated for Internet of Things transactions. So I just give this an identity. I put this certificate in here, and then all the IoT devices go in here. So when a transaction is submitted to the blockchain, it's going to be signed by this certificate. And when uh, transactions come from a web application, it's going to go sign with this. You can, you can always, for example, do things like put both certificates into the same application, and then you can do some logic in here. For example, I could have an if a statement in here uh, to do things uh, based on some conditions, and I can use one or another identity. But at the end, these identities are for servers, not for end users. You could use them for end users, but there are a lot of difficulties that you will be facing in that scenario. 